हरि ओ हरि ओ हरि ओ हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स एस यू सी आई एम सिटिंग स्टिल इन द सेम स्पॉट आवर क्वारंटाइन इज फिनिश बट वी एक्सटेंडेड द स्टे इन दिस ब्यूटीफुल प्लेस फॉर सम मोर टाइम इट्स नाइस टू बी एबल टू गो आउट वॉक इन नेचर The weather was not too favorable <laughs> recently. <laughs> we were prepared because in the last years we heard from Switzerland it's hot like in India. So far we haven't seen much of that but a lot of rain. <clears throat> Let's start with a question Diana Diana has asked some of you may have seen it it she wrote it on facebook often i say happiness is already there we don't have to create happiness it's just that we somehow have to learn to relax let go and then we become aware that happiness that is always there has never been absent it comes to the surface it can be experienced that we just disturb it by our reactions by our tensions that we are creating in the mind focusing on that level getting all tense about it now her question is how when we meet people who behave in ways we don't like how can we not react anymore <laughs> right that is the question <clears throat> we can decide okay I don't want to react anymore. We can decide certain emotions. I don't want to have them anymore. Certain behavior, I don't want to have it anymore. Then the situation comes. <laughs> We forget all about it, and all the old reactions are there. when we have been functioning in a certain way for a long time then naturally that habit is there and habits are a force and even if we become aware that we are doing that even if we decide i don't want to do that anymore that habit has not disappeared because of that that force of the habit is still there and in the situation we forget and puff <laughs> we go in the usual way of reacting what is usually happening as long as we are not conscious is not simply the moment that these reactions are happening but after that Yes. After that, we feel that we still carrying on those same reactions. Something annoys us, 
the situation is gone, and still we hook on in that feeling. Keep on repeating certain thoughts, repeating certain ideas that we think we are right and they shouldn't be like this. And keeping up that negative reaction in the mind and feeding it. And there we can hook it. If we are conscious of our reactions, then at least there we may remember, hey, come on, okay, let the reaction be there. Feel how it feels in the body and start to relax. That's the way we can work on it. No need of starting a lecture to ourselves and, ah, oh, again you did it, <laughs> again you fell into the trap. It doesn't matter, it's already passed. But when I see that I keep up that reaction, there I can consciously work on it, not struggle with the reaction, but see what is happening to my experience right now, here in the present, not what has happened in the past. And relax. And then it goes much quicker. And if we do that consequently, whenever that memory comes back, as long as we don't remember, nothing can be done. But when the memory comes back, then Instead of holding on to that position, it's not good what is happening, it's not good what they are doing, it's not good how they're, they are talking, it's not good, it's not good, I'm right, I'm right. Instead of holding on to that, just let that reaction be there. Observe what is happening to the present experience and relax. If we do that consequently, then we catch ourselves earlier and earlier. And eventually, you may be capable, even in the situation, when somebody behaves in ways we don't like, you feel, ah, the habit is there, the old reaction wants to come, and you just relax and let the reaction pass like a puff of air. There's no other way, we have to work on it. We have unconsciously worked on it for a long time to keep it going in the usual track. And by repeating certain ways, repeating certain reactions, they became stronger and stronger. The habit has its own momentum, is its own force, and it became stronger and stronger. But when we start to consciously see what's going on, even if it's after the event, when we see that we're still sticking to it, that it is something that we're just churning around in the head and make the experience heavy, heavy with it, there we can learn to relax. And if we do that, the old habit is not strengthened and it's getting a new habit that is gradually neutralizing the old habit. <laughs> Finally, when the old habit is neutralized, we don't have to have a habit. Just be natural, spontaneous in the moment, relaxed. And in that relaxation, being aware that there is that joyous, beautiful, creative, wonderful aspect in us that is not touched by any of what is happening. What is happening worldwide, what is happening in my personal experience just around me, it's noticed, it's observed, but it cannot touch that basic essence. Then we don't have to have a habit of dealing with our reactions, because as they come, we see them and let them go. But as long as they are strong, it's simple, like mathematics. <laughs> there is a force, the old habit, 
and we create another force, the new habit that whenever we become aware how much we in the clutches of it, there we learn to deal differently with it. Learn to relax and gradually that old habit loses its power. We don't get around that job. We can get inspired, we can get supported energetically, emotionally, intellectually. We can be helped, directed, but finally it's up to us. How we are dealing with ourselves, how we are dealing with our emotional reactions, how we are dealing with whatever is happening from moment to moment, each one has to go through that process all by themselves. It's made easier if we get help, but nobody can do that job for us. Don't get disheartened when you become aware, when you start to observe and see how much of negativity is there in my habitual way of functioning. What kind of thoughts I'm capable of having? What kind of feelings I'm capable of having? <laughs> it may be frightening when we really fully become aware what is there. But then we start to work on it. Sometimes it seems difficult. Sometimes it seems such a big burden, such a big job. But just learn to go about it as playfully as you can and you will start to notice that it's getting with time easier and easier and eventually the point comes that something just shifts in a way and what seemed to be so difficult before becomes simple and easy. <clears throat> All right, now I have been talking again, so I invite you to come in. Anybody who is ready to come in, please come in. Hello, Werner. Hello, Moksha. Hey, man. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit the same, but I have an experience what I want to say. Uh, I'm walking, for example, I'm walking on the beach mm -hmm. and see beautiful women. Yes. And the, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the attractions goes there. Yes. And I see, suddenly I became aware of, aha, there is an idea, something outside makes me happy. Mm -hmm. and normally I'm not aware of that I just oh yeah I have to look because they are so beautiful or blah 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 mm -hmm. but I I found out ah there is an idea with this woman mm -hmm. then I'm happy mm -hmm. and I I think if I look at it I do it with a lot of things what I think the attraction if it's going outside there is an idea if I have this then I'm happy right and what is making is what you were speaking about then if I run after these things I lose the contact with my own happiness yes and then I think I need this woman even more you know yes <laughs> It is amazing, right? Yeah, it's amazing, but it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I can also not stop things, but to see it. And now, because with girls and, and women, I had it very strong my whole life, that the, the, this attraction. And now I'm walking here and the attraction is still there. But I see, ah, you want, you have the idea, then your life is beautiful. And it pulls me away from the happiness what is right here mm. yes this uh, it's amazing it's amazing it's strong i mean it has been planted we have been created 
as females and males, and the attraction, attraction has been planted into it. <laughs> so, actually, you don't need to struggle against that natural reaction of feeling attracted. But what we can learn is then simply accept ah, that the attraction is there. And if you don't charge it with the idea, now I have to do something about it. Now I have to make contact. Now I have to do this and try to get somewhere, but simply see the attraction and accept that it is there, then it's not a problem. Then the attraction itself uh, is a joyous experience. It's simply when we have the idea, I have to do something about it. Or on the other hand, if you think that the attraction is not good, I have to struggle against it, then again, I'm also in tension. But then you can learn that you just accept, okay, that the attraction is there, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice, pleasant experience. So uh, just observe the experience instead of starting with the mind to start, create the story, a fantasy story. What could happen? Maybe I should. Maybe and 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 and, and. <laughs> Just bring the attention to the experience. Experience that feeling of attraction, and then it's self-fulfilling then you don't need to do something about it. And then it doesn't disturb you. It's not that we have to somehow try to squash all our emotions that come. Let the emotions come, but deal with the emotions directly instead of immediately putting fantasy for, or, on it, positive or negative. If somebody comes and is offensive, then we have our emotional reaction and we put our ideas about on top of it what we should do to be <laughs> also offensive. Or when there is attraction, then the fantasies come, what we could do about it, maybe we could <laughs> arrange something. And there, there we create the tension. But if you just accept, okay, that the attraction is there and relax in it then the ideas start to disappear and you're just in the present and then, okay, that emotion is there for some time. It's there, it has a peak and it disappears again and it doesn't cause a problem. It doesn't create a tension. It's only when we either hook into it and think I have to do something about it or if we think, oh, I shouldn't have this reaction and start to struggle against it, then it becomes tense and we lose the touch with the happiness. But if you accept, okay, there is that emotion. It's, it's a natural reaction of a male body <laughs> towards a beautiful female body. <laughs> but don't identify with it, with the idea that it's me, this body, and I have to do something in order to squeeze out some more happiness out of my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. But just experience it, accept it, relax in it, and let it come as it comes and go as it goes. And there is absolutely no problem about it. Yeah, I know this way is very good, like a, a maniac go behind it. Yes. And also decide, oh, now I'm meditating. It should not be there. Yeah. That and should also, be holy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and it didn't work, you see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and both it is oh, such a struggle. Yes. And now just what you say also relax and then, and then I experienced this and this is new. Just, mm -hmm. oh, see it? Oh, relax, right. no problem. And then it is really fun. Yes. No problem. No this problem. Is, this is new. <laughs> no problem is new. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Werner. You're welcome. Mm. Mario. 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 <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? Hi, Werner. Uh, it's Udi. Hello, Udi. Uh, it seemed to me that I had two opposite words 
which are to make an effort and relax. Mm -hmm. Find the, the, the relaxed position and make effort to get there. Mm -hmm. And my question is asking how we more stabilized the existence of this relaxation understanding that it mm -hmm. will be there all the time and not making any effort. Or for this struggle, as uh, Moksha have said, there is some benefit that uh, will establish this uh, understanding and uh, uh, knowing the relaxed position as something that is very stable in our existence. Right. I mean, on this material level, we have to make efforts. <laughs> Just getting up every morning is already an effort. <laughs> then facing all the life situations, it's full of efforts. But then we can learn to make those efforts playfully. Like somebody who sits in an office the whole day and they get all tense about it, often for recreation, they go do jogging out in nature or go swimming or do something which actually is continuously an effort and yet the feeling is it's a relaxation. It's a relaxation from the tension that I have been building up in my day-to-day -day life. And the effort, our spiritual effort, our, the effort of not getting caught up in the old reactions is not so much by learning to control it. The effort is simply that little, little effort that we have to continuously do again to remind ourselves, hey, come, have a good look at yourself first, instead of always observing with that judgmental attitude I have about everything. This is good, this is bad, this is a good guy, this is a bad guy, <laughs> this is... Uh, attractive person, this is a repulsive person, all that judgmental thing that is there, the effort is simply to remind ourselves, hey, look what I'm doing again, and then relax. Eventually, it's so natural, it comes totally effortless, but we cannot fake that effortlessness as long as we are out of habit, making unconsciously, continuously an effort to create those tensions. We don't get around that effort of putting a stop and say, hey, look what's going on. Look at yourself instead of always being fixed on what is going on outside and judge it. And <laughs> comment about it and do all this stuff about it but the effort is simply to remind it's not really in the beginning we have an idea the spiritual path is a total terrible effort we have to struggle to struggle until we somehow reach something and break through something and get transformed into something but then more and more we become aware the effort is just to bring the attention to the now and see how our experience is and what we are doing and learn not to do that anymore. And this becomes more and more relaxed. And then we can do that effort playfully, like somebody who is for relaxation going to the gym or going for a swim, or going jogging out in the woods, or going walking up a, a mountain for enjoyment, then it, that effort is not preventing our source of happiness, because the mind is relaxed in it. The mind is accepting that now I'm doing this physical effort, my, now this is a bit uh, strained, but so what? The mental relaxation is there because I like to do it. Mm -hmm. So effort will be there all the time in our day-to-day -day life. But we can learn not to get mentally tense about it. 
And that makes all the difference. I agree that the, the better way is to make the effort for the right attention that we are going or awareness that we are dealing with. But I must say that at least with myself, I see that uh, uh, the understanding of my state of mind after this, uh, I would say some conflict that I have when I meet something that I made an effort to meet him differently. The result is one. And when I see myself that a very nice nature meet almost the same thing, but in a relaxed fashion, mm -hmm. my feeling inside is much more happy. Right. And uh, are we build it up in ourselves. Well, of course, there are situations where it's much easier. Like when you are in a beautiful place and you enjoy the nature, it's much easier to be relaxed than when you are in a tense situation, when you are facing people with whom it's very difficult to communicate and uh, who may be offensive. When you see news, what is going on, and you think it's terrible what's going on, then it's much more difficult than when you are in a situation where you really like uh, what you are seeing, what you are feeling, then it's much easier to relax. But nevertheless, also in difficult situation, we can at least attempt to relax. How much you are every moment successful that you may not be able to really control, but whether you are attempting or not, that makes in the long run the all, uh, all the difference. And even if we miss, miss it in the situation, and completely get caught up in it. But after that, when it's calming down, and then we become aware, oh, I'm still holding on to it. I'm still sticking with that. There it becomes easier. And there we can make that effort. Okay, now I don't feed it anymore. Instead of that, I turn the attention back to myself. And it doesn't matter whether I was right in the situation and they were wrong. It doesn't matter what matters is how I'm dealing once I become aware what I'm doing, how I'm dealing with my own emotions, with my own reactions, and there we can start to relax. The effort is simply to turn the attention and then let go. Hmm. I understand because uh, it's it seemed to me lately that uh, in this place of earth that I live in, mm -hmm. uh, the main thing that we are dealing is, is uh, creating differences between each other. Yeah. And um, I found myself either hearing that I'm different from this or different from that or saying even to myself that we are not the same. And when I take myself to a different place in, world, in the world, like when we travel to India, Hmm. I really do not deal with that. I yeah. really free of that. And it's creating a lot of su suffering in our life, hmm. uh, mainly in this uh, Western world that uh, uh, we live in. Right. And uh, hopefully that uh, I can get rid of this, but uh, it's too strong. <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> Don't get this hard if it doesn't go so easy. But you go on and you have been doing it now. And uh, since I met you, you have already gone a long way. So just continue and don't, don't get disappointed when it's not working always so easily. Just, okay, we are here for that. That's where, why we came in this world, to learn, to grow. <coughs> And uh, I said, the effort is just to remind. I mean, if you become aware in a situation that you are about to react strongly there, you can make for a short moment an effort to stop and then relax. <laughs> but uh, after that, when the emotions go, go on, it's not so much a matter of effort, with an effort controlling those emotions. 
more like just turn the attention, observe what's going on and relax and then it disappears by itself. And when you go to India, of course you go out of your habitual circumstances where you have all your duties, where you have your habitual contacts with all the pleasant and unple unpleasant things. And there you go into a place and you have nothing of that and you are fully go with the intention, you are fully open to open your heart to the spiritual aspect. If you would be living in India, having your job as a doctor, then the situation also would change. Then there the same thing would come back. It's not India or Israel that makes it, it's just our habitual way of living has built up certain mechanisms that come so automatic that we have to learn. Uh, in that situation, to detach from it, observe them and relax them. If you were longer in India, uh, having a job in the hospital, having to deal with all the possible and impossible people, <laughs> then, then the, the same habits also could well build up there. <laughs> but since you come to India, to come to the ashram, to come to Arunachala, to come to satsangs, then you have already basically totally a different attitude when you start your day. I'm so thankful for this uh, belief that you create at least for me. Anyhow, you're doing a good job. Just continue. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are welcome. Wish you well, Woody. Are you? Are you? Is there anybody else who would like to come in? But now we are thirty-one people. Hello, Werner. Hello, uh, Leona. Hello. Huh? Ilona? Leona. Leona. Right. <laughs> so uh, last time I shared my intention to go on a special retreat. At yes. Home. Yes. And uh, now I've been listening to Udi and also person before Moksha, and it's exactly the same things that come up to me. Yeah. And I find it very, very powerful. So I actually don't feel I have to keep rules, so-called, of the retreat, as I used to go to retreat with the, all kinds of regulations and, um, yeah, rules, maybe I should say. Mm -hmm. um, it means that actually I can do anything I want. Yes, <laughs> so <it's> wonderful. <laughs> But um, what I'm watching is exactly what the people before me have dis um, described is the push and pull movement, which is basically the same. Push and pull movement is either wanting or not want wanting, but it's, it's the same type of energy. It's something that is not happening. Either I want it to go away or I want to... Hold it. <laughs> so I can notice how neurotic I can become when I just sit and so-called meditate. Let's say I do it with my eyes open and there's so many things around me that pull my attention to go out and change. It can be a, a, a piece of something on my carpet that I want to take away right now. Yeah. Small thing, yeah. And, you know, another cup of tea or one more biscuit or whatever. So, uh, and I spoke to a friend of mine who is here also with us and she really encouraged me to keep doing what I'm just doing, to continue my everyday life, but without talking to other people, unless I really have to for some reason without talking on the phone. Um, yeah. 
And it, I don't know if I could do something like that 10 years ago or even two years ago. Maybe I needed all the retreats I've done mm. in order to, uh, to do what I'm doing now with no effort, yeah. no bad speech about inner bad speech about whatever is happening or not happening. And the concentration or you know, maybe even samadhi that I can experience is, is, uh, is very good. Mm. Meanwhile, I had to rent out my apartment in the big city that pays my apartment where I live in the small village. And it was a big project. And I did it in three days or so. There were many, many people who were interested and I really had to manage it um, like, I don't know, it was really a big project to do. And I, I think like I, I went through it and after five days I had somebody to take it and sign the list and finish it completely. Um, Yeah, what can I say? I just want to say that it's really, really powerful and uh, somehow it's easier. It's easier, I don't know how to say, it's uh, useful maybe to do it this way. So I don't have to go into a retreat and then to come out of the retreat and get used back to life, which is not a retreat. Because actually it's all the same. Right. It's, it's not, not artificial. It's not artificial. But it's uh, not either retreat or life. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you are alive here now. And since you are having that possibility that, that you don't have big duties that you can do as you like, then do as you like and be happy in being and doing what you like. And if you want to communicate with people, then communicate. And if you have to communicate with people, then communicate. But keep that relaxedness and don't think it's either that I'm alone and don't talk or then uh, I'm uh, communicating. But see everything as the current of the same stream with different waves. Sometimes nobody's there. You can do whatever you like. Sometimes you have, like you had for three days, all this with your apartment, but that which you are is not affected by it. But since you are inclined to do so, to be a much of your time alone and to consciously be in the present, then by all means cultivate this. That's a great thing to do. Simply don't develop the fear of having to do with people. If it comes, then yeah. openly, with full heart, accept, okay, now I have to do something. Maybe there come, comes a time in your life out of some reason you have to be more active and more with people, then you welcome it as it comes, deal with it as it is, and let it go as it goes. <laughs> exactly. Like tomorrow I have to, I, I want to help my daughter-in-law with the children, with my grandchildren, and the day after. So I will do it and then I can go back. But again, it's not back and forth. Today, what I felt was that actually I don't have to prove anything to anyone and I don't have to do anything important. I have to do things for my heart, but nothing is important to really. me. Either right. am I, you know, it's just, that really was such a relief. I can just do anything. I can do, you know, anything. Prepare. That's great. That's yeah. great that you find out that you don't have to prove anything to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> you are complete in yourself. Or not, but but this, but I, I'm too old and I feel, you know, I'm not that old, but all my life this is what I've been doing, you know. Maybe right? this maybe this body is not more the youngest, but you are neither old nor young. You just are and you are yeah. complete in yourself. Yeah. It's only yeah. the idea of the personality that is not complete. 
And as long as we are identifying, then we have the ID, we have to prove something in order to get the nice feedback that we get appreciation and acceptance. But the more you become aware, everything is here, is now in you, the less you are running for that. <laughs> So I want to appreciate and to express my gratitude also to my friend who is here now and to everybody here, to you. But still it's important for me to have people around me that maybe feel the same. And this friend of mine, she really encouraged me to go my way. Mm. She told me also what she was doing and we really felt we were somehow together on the same small path on the big path and, and that really is, you know, really it's nice. very nice when we get this uh, encouragement when we can move with people who are like-minded but then there may also come people and say it's totally wrong what you are doing it's uh, how can you and it's selfish and blah 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 and uh -huh. there it's important that you still believe in yourself and do you listen to your inner voice, what is right for you, Absolutely. and not to what people think. And then uh, it's always nice. It's always pleasant when you are with people like-minded and they encourage you. But uh, don't get disheartened when people who go are not like-minded come and criticize. Then you have a good look at yourself and there deep down you feel what is right for you and you listen to that and not to the critics. Absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I don't I don't any longer go to this place. No. Yeah, yeah. Very Too good. Many years of, of Dukkha. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Self-confidence comes more and more the more you are connected with your true self. The more that connection is alive, the more that self-confidence is there that you just go your way. And some people like it and some people don't like it. <laughs> I know. Yes. <laughs> so, wish you well, continue like that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hario. <laughs> Hario, Hario. <clears throat>
We don't have to do that. What we have to do is become aware of what we are doing all the time to prevent it and then learn not to do that anymore. That is actually the spiritual work. And it's not completely different from psychological work. Simply it goes, it goes deeper than that. But as long on the level of the psyche, we create tensions all the time. That's the job to go about, to see what we are doing, to see the tensions we are creating and learn to observe them and relax. And then the more you are in that relaxed state, the more consciousness in its natural way simply start to unfold. Consciousness does, it's natural. It's what consciousness consciousness all the time is doing when we are not preventing it. That's why we are feeling so unhappy when we force our conscious experience in a little bubble and turning round and round and round in that because the natural thing for consciousness is to be expansive, open and get richer and richer, deeper and deeper in the experience. We don't really have to do that. What we have to do is become aware how much we are doing to prevent it and then find ways of not doing that anymore. <laughs> That's the base. That's what I'm coming back to all the time. It's not simply for beginners. It's for beginners. It's for those who have done for some time and it's for very advanced people because it's again and again and again the same thing that we create obstacles and we see them and learn to let them go and then everything happens by itself everything comes by itself beautiful effortless Is there anybody who would like to come? Please come. Good morning, Bernard. Hello, Klaus. Um, how about uh, I, f I? I think it's arising now with the. A feeling of, of duality between this uh, understanding and uh, what's going on in life. Um, so I feel with this uh, understanding, it's uh, I feel I can get this tendency of becoming apathic. Uh, that um, there is no. I I feel like um, there's a, a part of me that still wants to experience things in this life, and then. Like to to get a house and to, to 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 go do interesting things and so there's a part of me that still wants to to do these kind of things which has desires and and, mm -hmm. and on the other part it feels like there is a this search for peace and this search for for dropping the suffering and somehow they seem contradictory to each other and. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this is <laughs> bothering me, or just your, or even taking the motivation to go deeper because I, it seems like there is, I can't find that <laughs> that goal or that uh, meaning with that search. It seems that the meaning with the search is dropping a bit, you know. So, just wanted to to bring this up to if you can help me get this clarity that if there is a duality between these things or it's just perceived by my my mind that there is a duality between mm. those things right of course uh, the ideas pull in different directions <laughs> and then there comes the tension between that should i go this way should i go that way yeah. <laughs> and as long as we look at it that the two are 
contradictory, that it's either one or the other, then there will be conflict. I'm not saying you should now run after every uh, every desires that come uh, desire that come in your mind, <laughs> but it's also not that you have to now at all costs not to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you gradually sometimes you feel rather apathetic, but being here now alert is everything, but being apathetic. <laughs> It's not that we have to somehow get dumber and dumber and dumber so that the desires are not more capable of coming. And if the desires come and you go into it and you look at it really what it involves, because if we go after things, it always comes with a price. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's not simply the thing, there is always a long tail to it mm -hmm. and if you see the, the whole story not simply the accomplishment or the, the end of it but the whole tail that comes and once it's there what hangs on to it mm -hmm. then maybe that is enough that the desire disappears mm -hmm. if you just watch what really would be involved on it and uh, feel you in a way suddenly you may feel very relieved that you can say oh no actually it's not worth the trouble mm. but if there are persisting desires that really come strongly then you can accept okay this is part of my life story so let me go for it but mm. let me go for it consciously and experience all the sweet and the bitter that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. And with all the sweet and the bitter, not to get lost in it, but no matter what is happening, you still connect. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes less that it's either this or either that. It's not that either you go after your desires, either you live your life, the real life, the life, mm -hmm. external life, or then you withdraw. It's certainly helpful if you can withdraw at least sometime every day. It's mm -hmm. helpful if you have periods where you withdraw from the activities that you can collect yourself easier, that you can get more conscious. It gives insight. But then that doesn't mean if your life story, if your destiny is not that you are a, a hermit then if you force to yourself to be in a hermit life against your natural inclinations, then it doesn't help you anywhere. Mm -hmm. Then go with your natural inclinations, but go with them consciously. And a lot of it we can already. When it comes up, we really see not simply that idea, but everything that invariably is connected to it and then you say, no, actually, I don't need to go for that. It's no. too much, too much trouble. <laughs> yeah. But if it's there insistently, then you can accept, okay, let's go for the adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. let's go for it joyfully and consciously, as consciously as you can. And maybe on the way, you, you may decide, okay, that's enough. I, I went far enough. I don't need that anymore. Mm. But maybe you go all the way, but go as consciously as you can and experience all the things that invariably come along with it, yeah. that are attached with it. As long as we are having ideas in the mind, we can just pick up an idea and then drop it again. But if we go on the material level, there comes a lot of stuff that is invariably involved and you cannot simply drop because we put things in motions that we after that have to deal with the results of it <laughs> yeah yeah that's true yeah i had one i was going into one corporation but uh then i saw uh, i think i started to see the whole tale of that so i dropped it quite yeah. quickly i saw it was not worth it to go uh, go along that path so i feel like it's easier now to recognize when things are not natural and not uh, yeah. not uh, flowing ecologically. So uh, 
think that comes with with maybe experience and wisdom and also being able to to uh, discern in yourself what's what is what mm. uh, so because i it, it feels like also there's a lot of, of uh, passion wants to come out and and, and a lot of uh, creation and to do do things so I just need to find that that uh, that this force can come out in a natural way and not be staggered also so uh, um, yeah, I'm trying to unite these things so they don't fight each other. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. If the creativity is there, that you somehow feel that you want to do things and have to do things, then of course it's nice that you can find a way that you really stand behind it. That you don't think, yeah. uh, I'm doing things, but actually I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like, uh, it's, it's not something natural and good that comes out of me. Yeah. But if you're open to that, then somehow gradually it will more and more manifest. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I think also that normally with if you look into goal setting theories and stuff like that, you have you're like putting out the goal and then you have you going through a lot of things to reach those goals. So you go to to setbacks and things are not going well, but you still persist and you persist and you persist. Uh, but with this, I also feel like there is, and, and that makes me maybe a bit like uh, uh, not too consistent with things also, because when I feel that resistance is coming up, then I think maybe I quit too early or, or uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if, whether to stick with it or to, to go with it sometimes, because it's not always that uh, things look clear in the moment, but that, that bigger goal in the future also is uh, is something you, you, you maybe want, but, but you meet setbacks on the way, so. Right, so the, the, the rule of thumb, I cannot give you a magic thing, trick how to deal with every situation that goes, but mm -hmm. the rule of thumb is that uh, once you go through the, it with all the intellectual pros and cons and pros mm -hmm. and cons, then leave the intellectual level B by itself yeah. and more relax, get quiet and deep down you feel what is good for you. Mm -hmm. Everybody deep down really knows where the way is going. It's simply with our intellect we argue and argue and argue and then we don't hear that. But we can learn to be more open to that. Mm -hmm. Most of the people express it, listen to your heart, but that doesn't mean we have to listen to the emotions that come, but the heart of the heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the, deep down, you know, in every moment, whether it's right to persist and to struggle a bit, and then if you feel that it's good, then struggle playfully, joyously. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go for it. Let's go for the attend, adventure. But, yeah. but then there may be also deep down the direction that says uh, it's not worth the trouble to struggle in that direction. Mm -hmm. it's, it's better to just be and then let the opportunity come or go after the opportunity where that inclination to express yourself can express in it itself in a way that you deep down feel yes it's beautiful to do so yeah yeah exactly so uh, there's then, nothing when... sorry there is nothing wrong thinking about things logically and wait the pros and the cons mm -hmm. and if then it's clearing up even doing that and it's clear, okay, no, no, it's perfectly right to go this way, then that's fine. Yeah. But, yeah, but at the same time, often there are, it's always a bit in balance, the pros and the cons, and should I, should I not, should I go this way, should I go that way, then you learn to listen to the voice that comes from deep within you, mm -hmm. directing you, without necessarily listening only to logic, what yeah. could happen or could not happen. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah and, uh, and for for some years it was so important for me also to 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 go deeper spiritually and uh, it was maybe five six years and now i'm i must say i'm also a bit afraid that i am <laughs> i'm losing this passion now so uh, but um yeah i don't know if you can say anything about, about that right uh, usually people when starting out are very enthusiastic mm -hmm. but it's also an emotional thing very enthusiastic thinking oh i go for spirituality and they promise happiness and great mm -hmm. have ecstasy and beautiful things yeah. <laughs> and then as the time passes and we feel set back again and again then that passion may disappear a bit yeah but deep down everybody wants to be happy yeah because it's natural to, happy, to be happy. <laughs> and then uh, we can start to let go of all those spiritual ideas that we had, that uh, what I have to achieve, this state I have to achieve, or that yeah. goal I have to achieve, but more focus on the present and learn to be totally uncaused happy. <laughs> And yeah. relax in that. And then express that happiness in your external life, whatever, which way, whether you sit quietly by yourself or whether you go and for activities with people. Yeah. Yeah, and, and but do you feel that this happiness is, is coming through through even if even when you feel the conditioning that is there or, or like the, the me, that contraction of of, of the ego or is is it like stopping uh, it's certainly always filtered when it's mm. there mm. and sometimes you may have moments when that filter drops off and there is that intensity of it yeah and then out of habit the old filter comes back yeah but still uh, that is not the reason for not uh, learning to look at it and let yeah. it go as it comes yeah we have created that filter. Of course, we were influenced by the society, by our upbringing, by the, the whole conditioning that has invariably been put in. But after that, it's we that keep it alive out of habit and recreate it and recreate it and recreate it, the conditioning. Yeah. We don't have to do that. We can let go. And yeah. that is the job to, to see that it's there to see how strong it is, and in spite of that, go about it to learn to relax it, instead mm. of always recreating it. That's, yeah. that's how the tension remains, that uh, without being aware of it, we recreate it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's true. It's just got to be a bit more, more persistent with it, because it's... it's coming back strongly sometimes but it's also a bit now that I don't care so much about it when it comes back either so it's just like making some noise but I don't, I don't care <laughs> so uh, yeah don't be afraid if you feel that initial passion for spiritual achievement is going mm. you just readjust a bit that it's not really so much a spiritual goal that we have to reach that we what is the what is the point is that we learn here now no matter what we are doing no matter where we are that we learn to relax in that mm -hmm. and the more you do that the more you feel that sense of completion that sense of joyousness of simply existing bubbling yeah. up yeah. Uh, then that's that's really the point, and not uh, reaching some idea we have spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we we can leave it at that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Adio. Adio. My friends, I have to quickly stand up. I come back in a minute.
Der war ja immer geimpft. It's rainy weather. <laughs> and I just simply had to go and pee urgently. <laughs> I could have struggled against it, but then I thought so what? Satsang or no satsang, why not quickly run out and come back? <laughs> so there I am again. <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? Please come. Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. Uh, we talk about emotions and reactions today, and I see it. It's very. This subject is very close to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I watch my reactions. Uh, and last time, especially, I see with my parents how I react and uh, um, they are very strong. I Some days ago, I talked with my father and I felt so much resistance and uh, irritation about, his, about uh, what he asked me. Yeah. And I... I feel how it touches me, so so much it touches me. Uh, it uh, reminds me of some situations in my childhood and they are just so fresh. Yeah. <laughs> like nothing changed in it. Uh, but after that, I feel some calm down. Uh, after some time, I feel some relaxation in myself and understand oh, why I reacted this way again. L next time I will say another th another way. Mm. But then <laughs> some, some days uh, uh, after that I reacted again. Yeah. Today I, I, it happened again that I gave strong reaction. Yeah. Then I again uh, breath out and think oh it happened once again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think that my parents uh, can say me, you uh, begin your spiritual way maybe 15 years ago and still you, <laughs> you react <laughs> the same way. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it, it's, I see that in my situation, very slow process. Yeah, anyway, I, I feel some um relaxation about it that it happens uh, even if i react so strong after that i relax and uh, i see i i stopped expecting something that it will change so quickly mm -hmm. i i feel that <laughs> i just try to to accept it like like it is right when you are in the middle of the process it always looks like it goes very very slowly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that, that we think sometimes may think oh my god i have done so much of spiritual work and still it's happening what's wrong yeah, there? Yeah. Right. yes <laughs> <laughs> Don't get this hard at some things, they are simply strong and when you are in the midst of it, the, the time feels, it's a lot of time, but actually if you would step out, what are years? <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what are 10 years? <laughs> uh, yes, well, some lives maybe. <laughs> what, what is a lifetime? <laughs> in, the, in the cosmic scheme. <laughs> uh. Right. But... I, I would recommend you now in this particular situation that you sometimes sit down and you consciously bring that confrontation with the parents 
back, you invite it. And you invite the emotions. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you remember what has happened and you are not blocking it, then all the emotions come back. And there uh, you can just learn to just observe the emotions instead of being compelled to react. And if you do it by yourself, then in this way, then after that, it's also getting easier in a new situation that comes up with the similar confrontations that maybe you are still reacting, but you, maybe you, you are reacting less because earlier you feel, oh, uh, after all, I can also just watch the emotion and relax instead of relax, uh, reacting. <laughs> yeah, I see. If we have unpleasant situations that make us react emotionally, then either we think about it and uh, brood about it, or then we just don't want to think about it. But you can also do something in between that you neutrally invite it. Even if there is a reluctance somewhere to think about it and to go into that, that you say, okay, let me open up to that. Remember a situation, imagine what could happen if, it, if you want, but then see the real, not in order to somehow prepare yourself that you have the proper argument the next time or blah, 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 but just to work on yourself, see your reactions. And then you may feel that you had, after all, this chain your whole life long. Again, new situations, again and again, similar situations that brought about the same reactions. And so you can consciously accept, okay, there is something that I have to work on. So remember on purpose, situations that were hard, where there was a lot of confrontation, where there was a lot of reaction, remember them, but be here. Be now, don't get lost in the situation in the past. Be here, be now, and see how the emotions are coming. And then you observe what they are doing to you right now, in your body, energetically, and you relax. Oh, if, you, yeah. if you deal with difficult situations like that, then it's getting easier when similar situations come back the, to be centered in spite of the situation. You may lose it again and then, okay, it happened again. You keep on working on that situation. And it's not that we have to have uh, to work out every damn little detail that has ever happened. It's more like uh, such situations become representatives of a whole field that is there. And if we deal with it, sometimes a whole field field of possibilities that may happen that you don't want to happen is just gradually dropping off. Yeah, I see, Werner. Thank you very much. I'll try to do like this. And yes. I will watch my breath. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Okay. Good luck with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hari Om. Hari Om. Hari Om. Is there anybody else who would like to come? Please come. <clears throat> what I just have been talking about with Nelly, I had to learn that a bit the hard way because when I went for full-time <laughs> meditation, full-time spirituality, then I didn't want to deal with this kind of emotional stuff. Try to push it away, try to struggle against it, try it like Klaus, Klaus said, uh, yes, uh, he had the spiritual ideas or 
books are in the beginning uh, when we were talking that we have the ideas that we are unspiritual i shouldn't have certain reactions i shouldn't have certain emotions certain thoughts because i have to be holy <laughs> i struggled against it and it created a lot of pain until i learned to accept okay certain tendencies certain mechanisms are there and instead of struggling against it i rather invite it let them come let me deal with it the, the tricky thing then is that one doesn't get lost in fantasies in memories completely absorbed in the story that has happened but just use the stories use whatever is attached to those emotions and mechanisms to consciously bring it up or let it come up but be alert to be now here now not in the past in the story the past is a memory and that memory is capable of kindling emotions now and then observe now when you are alone when you are not in the confrontation with somebody else but still because of the memory of the confrontation you're just now in the present and the emotions come in spite of that even if you are all alone and there you become more and more familiar with the whole mechanism of it And by becoming familiar with it, you can easier detach, not go into old patterns of always I'm right and right and right, or they are wrong, they are wrong, they are bad, how can they do that to me? <laughs> but just watch the emotions now and relax. And then you become aware it's nothing wrong to have emotions, even the emotions that we usually call negative emotions. If you are not getting attached to it, if you are not building them up and make them bigger and bigger, they are harmless. They come, they go, like waves on the surface of, of a lake. They are cute, they are not destructive. It's only when somehow these waves are building up and building up and building up then they can become destructive. Even mechanisms that we really somehow feel very disgusted that we have them. If we have the courage to really confront them, to invite them, to see what they're really doing, then they lose their strength, they're after some time not more frightening. They are becoming more and more familiar and it's easier and easier to deal with them in a creative, in a harmonious way that they don't become destructive that cause suffering for myself or for others. As long as they are there and creating trouble again and again, we don't get around in one way or another to confront them. And this consciously inviting stuff, got to, uh, when we are by ourselves, when there is not an external confrontation, and learn to observe the emotions they are producing and relax them, is a very helpful way to weaken their power and eventually to completely drop them. Okay. You still sometimes? Is there anybody who would like to come in? Please come.
Okay, I talk. In the same context of how to deal with one's emotions, a bit about the present situation in the world. What is happening has very much divided people. Friends suddenly become suspicious of each other, start to spy on each other. It's like people are getting more and more divided and isolated. And in this situation, it's very important that we are doing just that, that we're not insisting that my position is right, their position is wrong. That we don't build up emotions further and further and get into different camps and struggle against each other. But basically, that you accept, after all, after all, everybody is a manifestation of that same divinity. Everybody is going through their own stuff, has been brought, brought up by a society, by parents, having been conditioned to function this way, to function that way. And from everybody's standpoint, there, from everybody's perspective, their way of dealing with it is the right way. Hmm. What helps us now, what helps society, what helps the world, what helps this situation we are in is not that we are insisting that I'm right and the others are wrong, but that I am here now. And all these averse reactions and all these averse emotions that may come up, I'm not strengthening them trying to strengthen my position of being right. But use those emotions to work myself. See, aha, there, I'm again totally judgmental, totally reacting. Let me, instead of dwelling on the situation that brought out about these emotions and reactions, turn the attention back on my own experience and see what they are doing to myself right now and learn to relax. Relax, relax, let go. The more we are doing that, the more our natural joyousness and beauty comes up. The peace that is at the base on which all the noisy stuff is built up the peace becomes more conscious. And then you're in touch with that and radiate that. And that is really the important thing that we can do. And that's really what is very important now. In this particular situation we are in, where there is so much emotion on the way, where there is so much tension amongst people because of what's going on, then it's important that instead of trying to fight this way or fight that way, increase that experience of being connected and radiated. No matter how people are, no matter what they think, no matter what they are doing. <laughs> that is the greatest contribution we can give, that something creative and beautiful can come out of what is happening. Is there anybody wanting to come in? I see. A camera that is open. Maybe it was not intentional. 
Is there anybody who wants to say something? <clears throat> okay, if nobody now feels like coming in, then I will end the official part of our satsang. <clears throat>